Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Paros here with a review of UFO Aftershock. This is a sequel to UFO Aftermath. This came two years after the game. This was made in uh, Aftermath was made in 2003. This game was made in 2005. And I'm just gonna start here to show you some stuff about the Geno, the Genoscope, also known as Geno Phase, which is basically in XCOM and everything. And this improved. This improved a lot from the first game. It's more technical and in base now. As you can see, you got a lot of specific laboratories instead of just building labs to research stuff. Each lab will research some, uh, something specific, like the implant lab will release implants, which for the cyborgs, which you get to make cyborgs. But I'll go into that later on. And here's the diplomacy. Here, the the people on top are known as the humans. The, peop the second people are known as the uh, cyborgs, the third people are the psionics, and the fourth are the uh, servicemen. Now, to get everything started, the, to tell you about the story, each of these men were created, well the humans are just regular people, the cyborgs were created due to the biomass in the um, aftermath, in aftermath, because the ending of aftermath was that the humans surrendered, they accepted the treaty that you can do in uh, the reticulant offer and that's what they did, they accepted the uh, offer and this is what happened. So you have you have your psionics, you have the cyborgs and you have the humans and which they generally don't like each other but you could kind of bring them together which is, ba which is one of your goals. But your main goal is really to eliminate the reticulant threat as it was ba in um, Aftermath. Where do you come in as all this? Well, you're basically known as the culture called the Recticulum. And they're basically coming into Earth and they're basically here to save the whole Earth, you know, unite everybody, all that peace, you know, all that stuff. But you learn very early, like, you gotta make peace with the uh, humans, but then you could also do whatever you want with the, with the cyborgs. And the, your advisor mentions that you should just basically um, be friendly with the cyborgs and the psionics because the more friends you have, the better you'll be. These are basically how the bases look like. The graphics for the bases aren't too bad. It could be better, but this game was made in 2005, so the graphics were pretty okay for the time, but I've seen better. And uh, the whole graphics, and this is the squad selection screen, which basically you get to have five squads, but you can only bring one out at a time. And depending on how, if you upgraded your craft or not, is how many people you have. You'll start out with only having like five people to be on your squad, but then um, you get more and more people. You get to have a uh, seven once you uh, once you upgrade it. And the, the list of weapons is very very crazy. I mean, you have guns like real life guns, like the Spaz 12. But then as you see there, you have the Spaz 15. Like you have some made up guns, and they're really really nice. Like they're still conventional weapons. You still um just you they're just like regular weapons. Like you, they're still projectile weapons and stuff like that. But there's a lot of weapons, like, there's AKs, there's, there's, uh, HK-33s, there's M4 Carbine, Spaz-12, and then, like I said, Spaz-15, fake weapons, and, um, also you can do, like, specific training to your characters as they level up, and they also need to be a certain level in certain things, like strength, they have to be a certain level in, like, let's say, like, strength to train how to be, like, um, I don't even know if this uh, class exists, but to be like a, um, a grenadier or something like that. But uh, it's actually pretty good. And another thing about this game is resource management, as you see from the top of the screen. You have resources, then you have uh, the number on the side, which is how much you'll lose, how much you'll gain, or what's your income, and or your loss. So I'm going to launch a mission, but I'm going to talk a little bit about... Um, more about the resources right now. For the resources, you have to conquer places, and once you conquer the places, you get the resources, and you can and you conquer the mines and that boosts your income. What's hard about this game is that not always the bad guys like the cultists, aka the servicemen, or um the mutants, which are also the transgenics from aftermath, or the aliens own the place. Sometimes even like the psionics, the cyborgs, and the humans own those minds. But you're gonna have to do what you gotta do and you have to destroy them 
well destroy their operations that they're doing in that place just to uh, help What's your next? team uh, get more reinforcements right meant more resources Here we go. which is pretty bad but orders commander you have to yes, do sir it. off I go it takes a hit on the diplomacy but you can easily get that? it back if you on do their missions way. if they right. call for missions and stuff like that ready sir so as you see you got I got my seven guys I took them out this is a special mission. The, the objective commander. of this mission is basically to escort these local humans into a green area, which is basically the extraction point. Orders and commander. you have all these guys, all their different weapons, and some of them are very good at yes, close combat, like the uh, right, like Here Betty, the one that that's in orders. purple, orders. the highlight in purple, is has Done. a special What's ability next? because of training Ready, sir? that she could use uh, two guns simultaneously. Which is pretty good, it gives a nudge. And then you also have the sniper, which is in light blue. Who's a psionic. Who could target people's body parts. Here I go. And she learned how to snipe because she got the sniper training. Self explanatory. What do you want to do now? Heading out. Okay, I'm gonna just wait till a combat scene opens because all I'm doing right. right now is just here we go. And trying to eliminate one. the people that I see. Yes, sir. So here's a cultist, aka a Targeting serviceman. enemy. Ready, okay. sir. They put a uh, little bit of a realistic approach in this game because if you step in front of the line of sight, yeah, yeah, you'll I get see hurt. Before in aftermath, there was no such thing as friendly fire. Friendly fire did not exist at all. So you could just be behind someone, use a machine yes, gun, sir. a minigun, whatever gun, just kill people yes, sir. without hurting any of your team. But now you have to position your characters in a certain place so they won't hit that so they won't hit each other. I so see I'm gonna have to move this dude in orange over oh, here. Man. I'm gonna have to move these guys over here just so they could get good angles and they won't hit my guys. Because they hit my guys. That's not gonna be good. So I have to, uh, it, it's kinda aggravating like uh, I'm gonna admit, even though with all the improvements in this game, this is very aggravating here. To just to destroy one enemy is just time consuming. I just enemy. spent like uh, probably a minute, I believe, That's a minute possible. or two, trying just moving Orders my commander. guys in the right position to get the enemy. Orders, commander. Um, you could do a lot of I tactical things in this game. I don't think like your tactic. I don't think like heading out. But there's there's really not right. too many strategies here we you can go. do. The only one I find is like. You have to team up, like, Heading out. because usually, you'll see in a bit, usually I when you see, see like, one enemy, man. you're gonna be like, alright, I'm gonna take my dude to shotgun him, and he has, like, strong armor, so I'm like, alright, it's gonna be okay, but then I go there and I find, like, a whole bunch of enemies, which you're gonna see later on. Um, the tactical what phase I actually like less ball? than Aftermath. Yes, sir. Here I go. I believe that it lacked some, Ready it lacked a lot of things, and it became a little bit realistic somehow. But it's not a bad thing. Like, yes, sir. You got more like levels and stuff like that for right. the for the battlefield, making it more realistic, which is pretty cool. Yes, sir. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. It's. I enjoyed that part. Heading out. But there's still a lot of things that I don't like about the tactical I see phase, one. which I really didn't about. I didn't really like the tactical phase too much about aftermath. Heading out. I really just like the geno phase, even though it really wasn't that um <laughs> complex oh, and. Man. I guess you could say, but uh, now it's too much. It's like not they like gave a step up to realism for the tactical battles, and it was good and bad in both ways. I mean, Again? now they put friendly fire in there. I was kind of, I was a little bit mad at that because now I have to move my guys. Yeah, yeah, as you I saw see. before, You're ready, sir. And now you see, see that one. the green. Now nah, I was like, all right, this is fun. And now all of a sudden you see like three, and uh, Betty goes down. It's really what I try to do most of the time. Orders is I try to conserve like my guys because I don't I want them to it. die. Yes. And basically, if you see real quick, sure. the person that's in light blue, the psionic, the sniper. If I move her behind those two guys in the red and orange, she will he will not she will not be able to hit the target. Then she'll have to move because if she tries to hit the target, she'll hit them, which then she'll cancel the order. Also in this game. Your characters will not attack at certain times, such as if the percentage is too low. I believe it's if it's less than like 15% or something like that, they won't even attempt to shoot the black yes, laser, sir. and then they won't attack. No way, I'm done. 
can hear one attacking the grenade just exploded her. The cultists are, are pretty difficult in this game. They're actually probably one of the hardest enemies you can face. You got the transgenics, which if you yes, if you see my uh, review of uh, Aftermath 1, I'm, I didn't really face them. I faced the Recticulants, which were the harder guys in that game. These are basically like the Recticulants. And they're, they, they're not the the cultists aren't just concerned. Um, they're just not uh, made up of humans. They're made up of cyborgs, psionics, so they have basically everybody. And their whole Ready, goal sir. is like this religious thing. Yes, sir. Heading out. It's really not too bad of how they're developed, but it's what it is. Okay, so enough. So I covered the game. I covered the tactical battles and the regular battles. And there's actually a glitch. Cause check this out. The guy is dead, but he's still standing. I tell my dude I can't to get him. The attack. And he's, he stands up. See, he stands up, and he's dead. And he just falls back down. This game uses a lot of ragdoll physics, which it also uses in the next one, Afterlight, which I'll go into that a different video. So, that's enough with the tactical battles and the plot. Now, for the audio, I mean for the graphics, which I'm just going to go over briefly, are actually pretty okay for the time. Like, the environments are well done. Like, they're not bad. I'm yes, sir? going off a of 2005 standard, so don't come at me like, all oh, the, the graphics are horrible. Remember, this is 2005, sir. Yes, this is actually pretty good for the time. Um, Ready, the character sir. models are yes, not sir. really bland. Right. Here we go. They're actually pretty well developed. So I don't have a complaint of that. You'll Orders just see Commander? the same character models over and over again at right. times. Here we go. Which is okay. It doesn't really bother me, but what bothers me is that the levels are so repetitive. You'll stay in the same maps all the time. Because the game doesn't have a random map generator. It just uses over the there. same maps over and over and over again. So you basically feel after a while, I've been here. No lie, I've been in this battles. I've been in this place so many times. Instead, I they start me off somewhere else. Another That's another thing I had to mention about the tactical battles. Heading you out. get to pick where you want to land. Which is pretty, it's pretty neat because it helps more as a tactical edge. Over there. And the reason why they seize first people is because of the um, psionic powers. Well, I'm done. I'm and uh, I have to just bring the person in purple and the rest of the civilians with them, so it's all Ready, good. Sir. Right. Now, Here moving on go. to audio because I really got to stress go? this point out. The voiceovers are go? actually good. I actually like the voice they moved a lot from Aftermath. What I do I not like. There. And I'm gonna stress this: what I do not like, ready, sir, is I do not like yes, sir. competitive you nature. What they keep saying, they keep on going. My way. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Right away, sir. Right yes, away, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Right away. Here I'm we go. Ready. Yes, yes, I'm going. They'll repeat the same things over and over and over and over and over again. So bad. The weapon sounds are okay. I mean, they're not horrible. They're actually pretty okay. The um, the music is actually pretty. Good. I actually, I actually found the soundtrack very enjoyable. It was not. It was sometimes got a little bit repetitive at times. I will admit, but it wasn't that bad. Like it was actually pretty enjoyable and everything. Overall, I had a pretty fun experience with this. It is flawed, but I had pretty fun. So this is Powerhouse signing off.